Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the unit set from 1975 which are available in the B&M stores. Once again I'd like to thank my amazing girlfriend for getting this for me as well as the other sets that came out during this time and yeah again let's get the boring part out of the way and look at the packaging. The packaging comes in the same standard style guide that we've seen throughout the previous years now and it's no different but one thing I would like to mention is I keep forgetting to mention this in the previous reviews but you do have the foil limited sticker. Moving on at the back you have the photos of the figures and Again, there's not really much information about these figures at all, uh, apart from what they are called. So that's pretty much it. And then opening up, you have the white background backdrop thingy, uh, whatever. Same thing as usual, guys. I mean, what do you expect? Taking the figures out of the box, they are actually quite good. Two of these figures might seem familiar, considering we got another unit set that came out several months prior. But this time around, they have been updated with new paint apps such as Sergeant Benson and the um, <clears throat> unit soldier, as well as a brand new head sculpt for the fourth Doctor in his Scottish regalia, which is also really nice. And yeah, so let's begin by looking at the fourth Doctor. So taking a look at the fourth Doctor, this is actually quite an interesting one, as this was leaked many years ago with several other prototypes of figures that were never released or got released later down the line. And it is ever so slightly different from the original release as the paint apps and even the head itself is different from that original prototype and I must say it is an improvement I mean from what I can tell it does look a bit better saying that there isn't any decent images of the original prototype from back when as the original photo has been lost but after all this time it has finally been released so firstly taking a look at the head sculpt now this has been criticized quite a lot as people have always argued saying this doesn't really look like Tom Baker. I mean, in my eyes, in certain angles, it does. I personally don't think it's that bad, as in certain angles, like I said, you can make out that it's Tom Baker, you know. I think it's something to do with the eyes and the way the head sags. It's a little bit difficult to say, really. It, I can't really pinpoint it, but I do personally think it does look like Tom Baker. But taking a look at the original 3D render, it does look a lot more like... Tom Baker and what you've got to remember is unfortunately the paint apps used on these figures are applied so heavily it does get rid of some of that original detail so this is probably what the problem is here but saying that as well the paint apps there doesn't seem to be any bleeds on mine they're all nice and crisp on certain areas such as the face as well as the hat on the eyes and lips they seem to be applied rather well and I can't really see much of a problem here. Taking a look at the hair this is new newly sculpted as well to apply the hat on and again it's painted in a dark brown with a light wash on top and then moving on to his Tamo Sharta hat you've got all of the checkered detail on the sides as well as the silver badge he has attached to the hat and the hat itself has been painted in a one black tone as well as that you also have the addition of the feather and the little bubble on the top as well as the two tassels on the back of the hat which are very nicely sculpted now judging from what I can tell the head itself is constructed in three pieces the hat and the hair and the actual head from what I can see and it's all been attached together as one piece so a lot of new sculpting has gone into making this new head so I don't know whether we're going to see this head at all in later figure releases I mean who knows maybe later down the line they could re-release him with a Zygon or two or even a new variant of Sarah and Harry you know it could happen moving down to the scarf this again is a brand new piece of tooling that has been made however on mine and i have seen this on several others the paint app on these aren't so great now again it is on a small scale figure so i can understand that there will be a few bleeds or misses here and there i mean if i had the energy or you know the talent i would probably repaint this myself but you know what i'm happy with it as it is it is a very nice piece to have and they could have easily just reused an old Tom Baker scarf but I'm glad they haven't here and it just looks really great with all pattern. Then moving down to the body, this has been reused several times before in the past with the different sets like the Sontaran set and the two Dalek sets that came out back in 2013 and 2011. I think it was around then. Anyhow, it's been repainted this time around with the cardigan representing the waistcoat that he wore throughout that tenure and 
the green scarf. Now, unfortunately, he didn't really wear a necktie like this in the story. It was more of a cravat tucked behind the shirt. But again, it still does work here. And I think this sculpt actually does work a lot better. Now, I think with the waistcoat itself, they could have easily maybe added a few more oranges in there. But again, I'm not one to complain. I'm it, this is, It's better than nothing, I suppose. And then looking at the coat, it's been molded in this brown plastic and underneath you can easily just spot the red safari jacket underneath the coat which has been sculpted on to the actual overcoat and then moving down to the legs this has to be the biggest improvement on any fourth doctor figure we have ever had and that is the fact that they have tried to recreate the mottled effect that was seen on his tweed trousers that he wore throughout pretty much most of his tenure when playing the fourth doctor and this is such a massive improvement considering we've never had this on any of the other figures that we've had in the past and i'm surprised we haven't seen it sooner and as i've said i really do love this so hoping in the future we get to see this sort of detail in later releases and then finally moving down to the shoes he is wearing his brown brogues that he again pretty much wore through most of his tenure and yeah that's pretty much it for the figure and yeah that's pretty much it for those so as i said it's really nice that we finally got a release of this version of the fourth doctor it was something that i never thought we'd actually be able to see and it is really nice that we get an updated version considering what we saw all those years ago in the prototype image. So now moving on to Sergeant Benton, which technically should be Warrant Officer Benton, but I digress. This is again a really fantastic figure. We saw this in the summer of 2020 as it came out in the Claws of Axos set, but it has been re-released again in this guise. It's pretty much exactly the same as we saw it before with all the new PVC piece at with the same paint apps but this time around they have sort of altered his jackets and a few other paint decals to represent what we saw in the story to be honest with this new version i actually do prefer the camo pattern compared to the original bland tones that we got in the claws of axos set but it's still a great figure and let's firstly take a look at the head same as the previous one the detail in it is really really good i do believe that hair has been painted slightly darker same with the eyebrows it still has all the additional skin tones, like the sort of rosy cheeks that they added on the original figure. Same with the beret that we saw before that's been painted nice and crisp. And the head itself just looks amazing. I mean, it's a really good sculpt and it does look like John Levine. Moving down to the actual body, as I've said before, it is a really, really great sculpt. Paint decor on this figure compared to the original really makes more of an interesting figure and as well as that you still have all that very amazing detail such as all the buckles and the pouches and the straps as well as the buttons that have been sculpted on here it's just there is so much detail in this jacket and as i've said it does make out to be a very interesting figure now the only gripe i do have is the fact yep he has got his sergeant signia on the arms and as i said before he's not supposed to have them but that is only like a minor nitpick it's, if you are really bothered about it i suggest you can probably get the other unit soldier in that set and just swap the heads around because the head is removable now i guess this is just a purpose so you can differentiate both of the unit figures that are in the set but you know as i said it's only a minor nitpick and it doesn't really bother me too much the figure also comes with his brown leather gloves that are really nicely sculpted on. And then moving down to the trousers, they've been painted in this light green colour with a slight dirty wash over the top. They're not as dirty this time around as they were on the original figure. It, I think it just depends on the set you get. And moving down to the shoes, they have been painted in a very dark brown colour with black soles. So that is pretty much it for the Sergeant Benton figure. Uh, I mean, Warrant Officer Benton figure. But moving on to accessories, he also comes with his submachine gun that was used within that story. Now, supposedly, these guns were supposed to be used in the Claws of Axos set that we saw in the previous set in June. However, it wasn't meant to be, and a lot of people complained with the weapons that were used that were too modern for the unit figure set that was released back then. But now you can say that they've improved it now, and I would say it is a bigger improvement. The sculpt itself on the gun is absolutely outstanding. You've got all the little details in the barrel, as well as the magazine for the bullets. 
and it's a very accurate accessory to what we would have seen in the story and it goes really well with both unit figures so we now move on to the final figure of this set which is unfortunately the most laughable figure of this set now this is essentially just captain yates with a porno tash on the top of it now i'm not saying this is a bad issue i know a lot of people saw it as laughable i definitely did i wasn't really that bothered about it i just thought well it's going to look interesting on the shelf but nevertheless we've now just got a unit soldier which makes out to be a very interesting figure so when this figure was released a lot of people laughed at this on the other hand a lot of people were quite angry about this thinking oh why did they do this why couldn't they just use a different head sculpt why didn't they make a new head sculpt and i think the simple reason is it's it's a unique th figure i suppose it's yeah. i really don't know what to make out for this to be honest it does make out to be an interesting sculpt and someone on one of the facebook groups actually did point out that there is a soldier in that story with a moustache so obviously they're trying to depict that this figure was actually based off one of the unit soldiers now the moustache itself has only been painted on it's not actually been sculpted on and i can understand that because they might want to reuse the head sculpt for captain yates at a later date so again the paintwork is okay at best i think i suppose on the moustache i just can't stop laughing at this thing to be honest i mean look at it but yeah i mean it's a very nice figure the paint apps on the face are very nice again it has the rosy sort of cheeks like the other soldiers that have been released in the past and the beret has been sculpted rather nicely the hair itself has been painted in a darker brown rather than the lighter brown that was used again i think it's just to differentiate from the captain yates figure as i said i know it did cause a lot of upset with the fact that they've done this like it, people have said it's cheap but on the plus side, it's better than nothing. Uh, I know a lot of people said they should have packaged it with a Brigadier, and I do agree it would have been nice to have had a Brigadier figure, but we did have one previously in the previous set. So it is a very nice, interesting concept that they've come up with to represent something that was seen in the show. Uh, but obviously the budget wasn't stretched so far for a new head sculpt. So as a figure itself, it is quite nice. And apart from the head sculpt, this is essentially the exact same figure as Sergeant Benson, just without the sergeant insignia on the sides. And the figure also comes with the same submachine gun as Sergeant Benson has. So taking a look at articulation, both the soldiers have head articulation as well as half ball jointed arms at the shoulders. The biceps can do a full 360. They can also bend at the elbows. The hands themselves can also do a full 360 turn. There's also waist articulation that can do a 360 and the legs can bend out forward and out to the sides. And he's also got thigh articulation as well as bending at the knee. And quickly taking a look at the fourth doctor, the only different articulation from the figures is that he doesn't have any ball jointed shoulders. Uh, so overall, I quite like this figure set that's been released. We have a new updated version of the fourth Doctor, especially with the paint apps in the trousers. I really hope we get to see that addition on later releases. And that new updated Sergeant Benton is absolutely outstanding. I really love the camo look on him and I think it looks really well. And the unit soldier that we got in the set is an added bonus really. Uh, the fact that people think that you know this is actually a downgrade from what we've seen in the past but we already did get a new head sculpt in this set with the fourth doctor with a second head sculpt might have been pushing it a bit but who know who cares i quite like it and i do highly recommend anyone who's wanting to try and get this set still i do believe they are still available in bnm even though the new sets will be announced quite soon so try and grab them while you can and yeah, thank you very much for watching and see you again for another review. Goodbye.